Hey gang, Jack Allaire here with my 100th episode. Now I had big plans of what to do and I decided, you know what? That's just really not why I do this. And then it got me to thinking, why do I do this? And it's creation. And that's kind of the main thing I'm going to start talking about. Uh, I'm up way too late once again, as the title suggests. And creation is the thing I want to focus on. Because it's what's been driving me for a little while. Now, video games are a big part of that tangentially. Because it's fun to see what other people have created. Just like it's fun to see art that other people have created. I'm not very good with art. So, the things that I make, I don't really think other people would appreciate. These videos apparently are an exception to that. But imagine that every video game that you make, someone's created it, and then they're bringing it to you, and they're saying, here, this is what I've made. Look. Look at how cool this is! Now, other games, other people have said, you know what? I'm going to create something that will let you create something. And then you can create whatever you want inside my own creation. Huh? Cool, right? So this led me to a few of the, the games that I think are fun and kind of an all-encompassing thing outside of that. So, creation. Let's start with Pac-Man. Pac-Man. Someone creates a game. Someone creates the AI for the characters. Someone creates the controls. Slam it all together. Boom. There's a game. You play the game they created. Not really a world, a few mazes, nothing truly inspiring, but it does inspire. Because people look at it and go, ha ha! I can do better. I can make more. And through years and time, people design better graphics and better this and better that, and they put it together, and then you end up coming up to a game called we'll skip way ahead and look at the game that has been kind of dominating my time which is Skyrim. Now Skyrim for those of you who don't know it's a first or third person depending on how you want to play it role-playing game. You're in the world of Skyrim and the people have created this entire world and their towns and people and wildlife and animals and rabbits and dogs and wolves and elephants and I don't know about elephants. No, there are elephants. There are mammoths. And there are giants and there are people and there are cat people and lizard people and people with funny eyes and people with dark skin and people with light skin. They created an entire world and they said, here, I have created this. This is my creation. This is what I wanted you to see. So people are fascinated by it, and they love it, but eventually you see everything that you can in the game, you see all the trees, and uh, I'm reminded of an episode where one of the Q on Star Trek wanted to leave, because he represented it as, you know, I've played the cards, I've played the pinball, I've done it all before, I'm done, I'm bored. So he ended up leaving the continuum. So that's what we do with games. We eventually get to the end, we play all we can, we leave the game behind. The creation, the time and effort that was poured into that creation, used up. Maybe we'll go back and play it, as often happens with older games that are particularly good or strike our fancy, or even books. Books. Books are a different aspect, I'll get to those in a minute. So the creation that somebody does, they give it to us, they show it to us. Like movies. Movies. Many creation parts go into a movie. There's the writer. The writer writes a screenplay. I'm speaking of a original movie. The writer writes a screenplay. Someone sees the screenplay and goes, Aha! This could be a good movie. Or at least a mediocre movie. Or hopefully it'll make money. Then that creation 
is given to a producer. And the producer says, aha, I can get a team together to make this, this creation into a bigger creation. And then you get that producer hires on a director and a cinematographer and a this and a that. And they get all of the people together, all of the actors who are going to be on screen, and each of their performance is a creation. And then it's slammed all together and then presented to us, the audience who all these creations are for. But, that's a movie. You see the movie, you see the creation, and then you see the eventual result. Books. Books are different, though. Because books, the writer has in his imagination what's going on, what the story is, and he writes it down. He writes down about the Civil War veteran who's, who's lost a limb and he's trying to survive and he falls in love with the aristocrat lady from the other side and they fall in love and they have to be sneaky and but he's horribly guilty because his friends are still dying fighting her brother who her brother's the general. All of that is happening in his head. He puts it down on paper. He writes it down and he says, okay, here and then here's where the great thing comes in. Is that that creation, he took the creation in his mind, slammed it, squeezed it down, fitted, fitted into words on a page. And then the words on the page, as you read them, your mind creates a whole different set of things that might not look like what the author did. So when he said that the, the, the guy lost his leg, you know, he, he might have thought that it was, you know, lost at, the, lost at the knee. You might have thought it was a little higher. You might have thought that he walked with a peg leg. Somebody else might have thought he had, you know, one of the little sleeves that goes up there that actually looks like a boot. All these different things, different variations. How, if he had a beard, was it a long beard, was it a short beard, was it a bushy beard? All these things little minute details you create in your own head after seeing a creation from somebody who created the original image in their head. Mind blowing, at least to me. So this is where we come into a game like Minecraft. Where Minecraft, somebody created this game and said, here, this is my game. And you walk into that game and all you do in that game is create other stuff. And people have created everything from, I created a little house. I created a tower. I created a bridge. I created a mine. People have created computers in there. Roller coasters. Elevators. All from stupid little blocks. So there's the fun part. There's the creation. Which takes me all the way back to the beginning of time. And for a moment, let's assume, take this as an assumption, We'll take the Christian outlook. God spends a bunch of days creating stuff. Light, planets, earth, water, trees, animals. And then he looks around and goes, look what I've created. And he looks around and realizes that there's really no one else. So he thinks to himself, hmm, how, who, who can possibly appreciate this creation? So in his own image, he creates man. And then creates woman from man. And says, look, look at this. Look at the stuff I've created. Go ahead, you know name some of that stuff. Because this is cool. And Adam goes about naming stuff. And then he and Adam create more humans, more creation. We create the names, we create people, we create things. We build tools. A couple thousand years later, here we are. Okay. But, let's assume that that's not. Let's assume that that's not. Let's take the look of Hindu. 
Now, I don't claim to be an expert, but from the general idea I have, we are all the play of Brahman. Which means that God only thinks that we exist. Let that soak in for a minute. That means that if God ever wakes up from his dream, which we are, then we go poof, and we're gone. Now imagine if something you created, every night you go to lay down, you dream, you wake up, do you remember them? No. Those dreams, the whole time you dreamed, poof, gone. Occasionally you remember them, you remember little fragments of them. Like I remember a little little fragment of uh, my, there was a yellow picnic table that my family had, that the kids, the kids table. Everybody has the kids table, right? Grown-ups get to the grown-up table. <laughs> And then the kids get to sit at the kids' table and act, act goofy and whatever. And then eventually you move to the adults' table and you realize, Wow, this place sucks ass! I want to go sit at the kids' table! So you become the goofy uncle that can go sit at the kids' table, and then you're alright again. But I digress. So there was this yellow table, and I was sitting at it, and Batman and Robin were sitting at it, and then one of my friends was sitting at it, and he, we were suddenly at the playground in the sand. Remember sand at playgrounds? And then suddenly, the, the bad guy, I don't know who the bad guy is, but the bad guy. Because it's a dream. I know who the bad guy is, but I don't really know who the bad guy is. I just know they're a bad guy. Gets sucked into the sand. So Batman and Robin and I go, ha ha, we must figure this out. We hop in the Batmobile, drive to the Batcave, punch some stuff into the Bat computer, and it spits out an answer. When I woke up, dream was gone. But not really. It's still up here. Creation is one of the most amazing things ever. And I've realized that that's why, and some of my friends have given me some crap at the, about this at work, but that Dungeons and Dragons, playing D&D, is starting to draw me back in. And the reason for that is, is that in most games that you play, most video games that you play, there are rules. And the creators of the game will break the rules when not breaking the rules would break the game. Another example. Skyrim. There's a well. There's an invisible wall on top of the well. You can't jump down the well. Why can't you jump down the well? Because there's no way to get back out of the well. So if you jump down the well, you're stuck down at the well. Why would you jump down the well? Well, to see what's down at the bottom of the well. Now, if it's a game of D&D, &D, the Dungeon Master, who is another human being, another thinking, living, breathing human being with a mind and an imagination that is constantly creating thoughts, is sitting there saying, okay, there's a well in the middle of town. If you tell that DM, well, I jump in the well. The DM may, nicer ones may say, are you sure? And you say, yes, I jump in the well. And a few things may happen. The DM may be a rather harsh individual, and this is not part of his plan. And therefore you jump down the well, you fall in the water because you are wearing armor, you drown and you die. You will die. Another DM may say, you jump down there, you land in the water, and you notice a cave. He has suddenly created, altered the world in which the pretend characters live. That's why I love it. That instance right there is that, and it's a lot like Schrodinger's cat, and that you don't know what's at the bottom of the well until you go down and look in the bottom of the well. You can't know that there's nothing down there. You can't know that there's something down there until you jump down there. And it's because it's human beings being human beings. And you can go back and forth, and you can say, okay, well, I jumped down there. And then he says, well, you know, there's a cavern. Ooh, there's a cavern. Didn't know there was going to be a cavern down here. I need to make some light. Is there any light down here? Oh, no, there's no light down here. Okay, well, then I need to... I pull out my torch. Because I brought a torch. Great. 
light the torch. And you walk down the cavern, and maybe there's nothing. Maybe there's nothing down at the bottom of the cavern. Maybe you just walk in, psh, oh, nope, more rock, you're done. Or maybe there's a whole world down there. But without the two people there, or more, you never know. That's why I love creation. I love the idea of the mind. The human mind is capable of so many things, and we do such stupid shit with it. What do you do on a daily basis? What do you do? You wake up, okay, done before. You eat breakfast, done before. You drive to work, okay. You do, you go to work, you do the same thing over and 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 over again until it's lunchtime. Clock up for lunch, you eat lunch. Same lunch you had yesterday. You go back to work, you do the same thing you did in the morning over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Now, but when you throw human beings in there, that's when it gets fun. Your coworkers. Because you look around at your coworkers and you think, aha, what did they do? I know what I know what's gonna happen on my job, because my job is my job. My job's been my same job since I've had this job. I know my job. But my coworkers, while they're still my coworkers, and they've been my coworkers, they do different stuff than me. And you never know until you ask them. And then you find out that, well, let's see. Last night I went home and I watched this TV show. Oh, I didn't watch that TV show. You watched the TV show? Really? Is it any good? No, it's not any good. Oh, okay, well then I shouldn't watch that TV show. Or you get there and you're like, oh, I watched this movie last night. My coworker and I vastly disagree on The Hunger Games. I think that game, that movie was boring as snot. And he loved it. So, difference of opinion. Did we watch a different movie? No, we watched the same movie. He's got an HDTV, I've got an HDTV. We watched the same movie, but the difference is, is that for me, it didn't go anywhere. Now I know there are more to come, in theory, and they might make them, but that's what, that's what I want, that's what I crave, is the interaction between human beings, and sitting around playing a game where the rules of the game are such that I can constantly create that, make me happy. That's why I want to get back into it. That's why I want to play D&D. Because of the change, because of the creation that it can happen. Think of, think of all the games that you've ever played. Think of Uno! Uno! Great example! Uno! Originally had colors and numbers. And then they put a wild in there. Ooh. And then they put a draw two and a skip. Oh, and then they put a wild draw four. Oh, crap. And then they came out with the Batman edition that had the draw three and the skip and the Joker and all kinds of other crazy stuff. Iteration, creation, moving things forward, moving things backwards in a different direction, sideways. Like the Wonka Vader from Willy Wonka. The great glass elevator. The one that can go any, anyways, slant ways. So, I leave you with that, creation. For my 100th episode, the 100th of these that I have created, I hope that you've enjoyed this. And find some creation that you love, and play on. Cheers.